up here that were set out in the yeah. congregation. They will come up and we'll sing right down here. Okay, gotcha. Good morning, and welcome to Central United Methodist Church. To those online, we welcome you online, and any guests in our service today, we certainly welcome you also. Uh, today we have back in our pulpit a good friend from Newberry, Randy Hildebrand. He's a missionary with the General Board of Global Ministries of the United Methodist Church. He's a connective worker with God's Connective Cooperative Parish up in Newberry, which serves seven churches, and they help develop leadership, development of projects, hosting a volunteer in mission teams. Randy also runs a uh, Dunlap Ministry Center in Newberry, which some of, many of our members here have gone up and helped paint and donate time up there. Um, other than that, we welcome you to the service this morning, and let us um, give our statement of our church, connecting all people to God by building bridges of caring, outreach, and acceptance. Let us rise and join in the call to worship. O Lord, our Lord, Your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? And yet you have made them little less than God. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen, and also the, beasts of the, field. the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, remain standing and let us join in. This is my Father's world, number 144.
day. We thank you for time that we can give to you to worship you. And Father, we thank you for what you are doing for us. Father, blessing us, letting us know that you are with us in all that we do. Father, we thank you for your son on the cross. And Father, we thank you again for every day that you give us. Be with us now as we worship. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. The youth, the youth, the children. What's that? Children. Oh, children. Yes, sorry. Temple children. Where are the young people? This is my favorite time. Don't they need to bring the box of the key? Yeah, that's it all for you for that. Yeah. Go ahead and see there, guys. Got a question for you. Got a question for you. Do you know what a missionary is? Does anybody know? Our first scripture message today comes from the Paul's first letter to the church of Corinth. Paul has finished writing from various spiritual gifts that were work within the church, and now he writes to instruct us to seek the greater gifts of faith, hope, and love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 13. Love is patient, love is kind, 
It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It does not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is part disappears. When I was a child, I talked as a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish hood and things. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these th three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love.
Our second scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm on there. Is that right? Okay. Good, 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 good. Well, guys, um, I have to admit a couple of things to you. Uh, this morning I was over to El Conquin Church, and um, uh, I forgot my bifocals. <laughs> it was kind of an uphill fight there for a little bit, but we finally got it smoothed down and everything went well. And uh, I'm so glad that you have a liturgist here today because uh, I would be up here stumbling around a little bit with you. So... But guys, I want to ask you a question, a simple question. Who's your hero? Do you have a hero? Do you have someone that you look up to and you think the world of? Do you have a hero? I was uh, explaining at the other church, one of my favorite heroes is, now I, I don't, I'm not that old, but I'm going to date myself a little bit here, was... When I grew up as a little boy in Oklahoma, my favorite person was Red Skelton. I loved Clint Kadiddlehopper. That was probably some of the first words I could ever spell correctly. But what do you remember about Red Skelton? What was that? Very funny. Did you know that he was very, very faithful to his church and to God? You remember what he used to say at the end of the message when he got finished? When, when everything was at all, all of his people came out on the stage and they, and, you know, and they, they said good night and all that to you on television and all that. He said one thing all the time, God bless. He said, God bless. I later read a book about Red Skelton, and in that book, he made a profound, profound statement. It, it hit me so hard, I had to sit down and stop for a minute. And he said this. He said, God knows you've got to love your enemies because you might have created them. Wow. Wow. That's a big statement. That's a big, big statement. I'm still processing that in my life. But think about that. Who are your heroes? I had a lady that used to, uh, I, I grew up in a very small country church. You probably can hear that twang in my voice. I'm from the deep south. I went to school at Southern Mississippi and I can twang with the best of you. And I can even put some uh, other words in there like fitting. That means I'm getting ready to do something. I can throw all that in there. Let me grab my water here. I know it's up here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Thank you. <clears throat> there was a lady in our church, and she... You have ladies like this in your church. She was everybody's mom. You know, when the kids showed up, we all gathered with her because she had one of those big black leather purses. You remember when I'm talking about the big ones? And, and she would put it right there, and she would walk around like this. And, uh, and we knew what she carried in that purse. She carried the candy. She was the candy lady. 
I don't know what you call them, but you remember the things you used to get that were real long, and they like had red and black and different things in it, and it was, it, it was, it was some older, harder, hard candy. Well, the big thing for us was, is we knew she had the good candy and the candy she had left from last week. We were after the good candy. So we always devised something to get to that good candy. And so I volunteered for it. Now, you have to understand my mother was very churched. Uh, we had to have a belt on when we went to church. I remember one time I didn't have a belt on. We went back home and got a belt on me. And I thought I was going to get a belt somewhere else too. So she always set up right about there. She sat right there. And I wanted to get to the candy before the kids got there. I mean, before the other ones got there. So I devised a plan. I'm going to get down on the floor and... Uh, I'm just going to crawl right under the pews and get down there so I'm first in line because I wanted the good stuff. So, lo and behold, I did it. But I had a little problem. My dad, I knew where my mom and dad sat, but I didn't know my dad had moved over to the other side. So I'm going down through there, and everybody's just kind of looking at me crawling down through there. And then I come to my father, and I go right down between his legs right there, and the only thing I saw was, uh, we'll take care of this when we get home. You know, but I got my candy. But there was something special about her. She was my hero. When she passed away, I remember going and getting a box of uh, Worth candies, the little Worth, am I saying that right, Worth candies? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and when she passed, we went up to the front to pay our respects, and we put it in the casket with her because she changed our lives. She was a lady that no matter what happened in life, how bad it was, how ugly it was, she found the silver lining. She was my hero. Can you remember growing up who were your heroes? Who were your heroes? Who were your heroes? Who did you look up to every day? I know a lot of us got grandmothers because, you know, when you went to our house all the time, you always had pie, cake, and cookies. But today, in this world that we live in, we don't have too many more heroes, do we, at times? We just hear bad. We never hear the good news. And I want to tell you about the good news. Because the good news is my heroes. My heroes are the people that show up when a, a young lady one day, they called me from down in the community and they said, someone had stolen this young girl's bike. I said, well, do you know where it went or something like that? But what happened was at the center, at the Dunlap Ministry Center, Someone had delivered a bike the day before, and I didn't know it was in the back room. Am I? I need to step up back here, okay? It was in the back room. And that bike, we gave her a new bike to go home on. And I'm thinking, someone was her hero today. Not me, the person that brought the bike. When it comes to, to, to the world and it comes to helping people, your congregation, I'm going to brag on you here a little bit, okay? I'm going to brag. You in this congregation are heroes to many people every day. You don't know it, but you are. When you send those boots over for our kids to go to school in, when you show up and you help us box food up, when you come over and um, I mean we just do everything and I always think of when people are there like you there are heroes but my second question my third question for you is who is the ultimate hero 
Who is the ultimate hero? Christ. Jesus Christ. He, he does it all, guys. I tell people all the time. When families come into our center and you can tell their life is tore apart, they've just had a fire, and, and they're sitting there and you know they're down, they're, they're down for the count. They can't, they don't know what they're going to do. They have nothing. But through our ministry, we're able to get them into a home and get them set back up until they can get back on their feet. Children that show up at school with no shoes once in a while. We get a phone call at our office. Randy, you got a size seven? I got a girl up here don't have shoes on and it's cold. We're able to take that size seven shoe and take it to her. So you just, I, I always say, y'all are my heroes because you come and you give and you help. As also I was uh, growing up as a young boy, my father passed away at a very young age. Um, uh, uh, me, when I was young, I'm sorry, I should say that right. When I was young, he passed away. And uh, I was in Boy Scouts. And um, the scoutmaster there took me under his wing and he became my hero he always was encouraging he wanted to know where I was at what are you doing how are you doing that was my hero but my ultimate hero is Jesus Christ and I always tell people now I'm, a, I'm an old shouting Methodist okay do you know what a shouting Methodist is a shouting Methodist is the men, uh, the women that sit on the back row shouting to keep their husbands awake while you're preaching. That's a shouting Methodist. Do you know what 60 watt theology is? That's when we used to have the old camp, camp meetings down by the river and the big tent was up and there would be one light bulb hanging in the middle. That's so the pastor could see to read the Bible. That's what we call... 30 watt theology. I, I, have, you ever, have you ever heard of that? 30 watt theology? Well, in the South, we do a lot of gets togethers and we get down on the on the banks of the rivers, and you know, it'd be nothing like to sit there and then one day we're all lined up outside getting baptized in the water. But he's my hero, God is. And I hope he is your hero. If you don't know if he's your hero, you can call and talk to him. He'd love to talk to you and visit with you. And guys, I, I was thinking of other things today as I was driving here. First of all, I didn't get here with my bifocals, okay? I think I already told you that. And I was over to Algonquin doing this. What's that? Yeah, I mean, I was taking glass. So I was sweating bullets because I couldn't see. So, uh, we've been at annual conference. I saw your pastor there. I got to visit with him. It's the first time I got to meet him. Uh, seems like a great guy. And, um, and uh, we, had a good, we had a good discussion on life. But as I end this today, how many people watch... Um, how many people watch Lord of the Rings? How many people have ever watched that? Has anybody ever watched that, Lord of the Rings? Okay, okay, I now good. I mean, you're going to get really good here in a minute because you're going to follow me on this one. There's a part in that movie. Now, I'm not a big movie person, okay? I am not a big movie person. But there's a thing, there, something happens in there. It, I don't know if his name's Voltar, is that right? Sound right? The, the, the older man that's got the, you know, he's the older man. And they're running away from evil. They're running away from this, this evil people. And the guy takes his stick up, this big staff, and he crams it down in the ground. And he says, you shall not pass. 
I thought, man, that's some, that's some good theology right there. You shall not pass. But guys, as I said many other times, I always tell people this. God is with you. He's always with you. If you need to take a moment to talk to him, take a moment to talk with him because he loves you. I'm going to leave you with one last story. We were building on a lady's home, and uh, we do home repair ministry where we're at, and we're getting all this going on and all this. This lady had basically nothing. I mean, she, she just didn't have a lot. She just, I mean, she had very little. And we're out there, we're out there putting her roof on and we're trying to get her plumbing straightened out and all that. And, and we get it all done and it's time to leave and she walks out off the front porch and looks at us and she gave us a box of Cracker Jacks. Now I was like, well, first of all, I had young people with me did not know what Cracker Jacks were, okay? I had to tell them what it was. So she comes out and she gave us a Cracker Jacks. And we were like, well, you know, why, why are we getting Cracker Jacks? Because that's all she had. That's all she had. And I guess that day, a bunch of volunteers, kind of like you, were her heroes that day. Because she has water in the house now. She still calls me a lot. Uh, she always calls me for Feeding America. She said, when are you going to get by? I said, we're coming. We haven't forgot you. But think about that. She gave all she gave. She gave all that she could give. What did God do? He gave all that he could give for you. So wherever you go in your life today, know that he is with you. And I hope he is your number one hero. Guys, thank you for letting me be with you here today. Um, I always tell people I'm going to get you out before the Baptists get out so you can get the good chicken at the buffet, okay? You won't be eating thighs, okay? Because uh, when I was in the Appalachians, that was a big thing. The Baptist church was across the street, and we were over here, and we were looking across like, who's going who's gonna to end up first? And then, and then we also had a lady in our church called over to the, to the restaurant and told them when we were coming and how many pieces of chicken she wanted. And when we got there, her plate was sitting right on the table. <clears throat> But, guys, thank you so much for what you do for us in the ministry at God's Country Cooperative Parish. Uh, it, it, it means so much to us. And, uh, again, you're my heroes, and I appreciate you for all that you do. God bless you. <clears throat>
praise God. Gracious God, you have given us more than we could ever repay. You have filled us in your ways we didn't even know we needed. Awaken again to both the giver and the gifts, we respond in gratitude. Passing along your grace, take the offerings of our lives and of our hearts, O God, and use them to care for your family and for the world. Amen. You may be seated. If any of you have any prayer requests, you might... Uh, hold them up so the ushers can bring them forward for him. Yeah. You're going to have to look at that for me because I can't <laughs> oh, see that's it. Right. Okay. I have no bifocals. Uh, <laughs> uh, sister, who she went into hospice uh, care yesterday. Jim. Okay. Jim. Okay. Jim. Jim. Sister. Pray, praying for Jim's sister. Some announcements. I was hoping someone would be up here, but we'll delay for a minute. Uh, Randy, your mission up there, could you address any particular needs right now? Uh, um, we've come up and donated time and things. Or is there anything? Right now, I don't have, right, right now, what we're doing is we're getting ready for the winter. I know that sounds bad. We're burning up in here, but uh, we are getting ready for the winter because. We have taken on some more uh, schools. We, we now have five schools we take care of instead of, we only used to have three to four, but now we have five schools. We take care of Inga Dine, Grand Marais, and that for the kids to close with us for uh, the winter. That is, that is one of the things that I always tell people we never get enough boots. Boots, boots, boots. I keep saying that, but that is, that is one of our biggest needs. And we also Any other concerns for the congregation? Yes, there.
extra reminder, I've got Jenny to come up here too, to fire us up. Yeah. Good morning. I just ran up here, so I might be a little out of breath. Um, so as Ms. Terry was saying, Vacation Bible School is coming up. It is the last week of June, Monday the 26th through Thursday, June 29th. Um, we planned it like that because the Friday after is Engineers Day. So we hope grandkids are in town and will come for a fun week of Vacation Bible School and they can go to Engineers Day on Friday. It is from 9 a.m. until 12 p.m. And it's for children ages 3 to 11 years old once they've finished um, fifth grade. And this year, we're going to be, um, the theme is Hero Hotline, and we have five themes that we're covering. It's how to follow Jesus, how to help others, working together, listening to God, and showing grace. Registration is available online, or we do have registration forms outside um, the narthex in front of the library. And as Ms. Terry was also saying, we need volunteers, especially for the week of, for group leaders or teacher assistants. Um, but anywhere you can serve, we'd be, you know, grateful for any help that we can get. And if you go by room 101, you'll see we've been <laughs> hard at work. We have stuff everywhere. We've been doing backdrops and decorations. Um, but, yeah, we appreciate all the support that we can get and for your prayers. Thank you. It'd certainly be good to see a big vacation school again. Jim, John, what would you have? Oh, yeah, the birthday's down there, and we have... A very dedicated man, Bob Noble, 98. I've been wondering, I, I haven't heard about him lately, but I uh, hope he's doing well health-wise. He's one of our way old veterans of the town. Uh, um, also, Marv DeWitt, birthday coming up there too. Not, I think that concludes the announcements. Uh, closing hymn is, We've Story to Tell the Nation, 569, Let Us Rise and Sing Joyously. <laughs> 